Hello and welcome in your today's online class of history. Let's continue with the story of the rise of nationalism in Europe. Today we will see the process of unification of Germany. As you have seen in the last class, nationalist feelings were widespread among the middle class Germans who in 1848 tried to unite the different regions of the German confederation into a nation state governed by an elected parliament. This liberal initiative to nation building was however repressed by the combined forces of the monarchy and the military supported by the large land owners called Junkers of Prussia. From then onwards, Prussia took the leadership of the movement of national unification in Germany under the leadership of its Prime Minister Ottoman Bismarck. He was the chief architect of this process, carried out with the help of Prussian army and bureaucracy. Three wars over, the, over seven years with Austria, Denmark and France ended in Prussian victory and completed the process of unification. In January 1871, Prussian King William I was proclaimed German Emperor in a ceremony held at Versailles. On a very bitter cold night, on 18th January 1871, assembly comprising German states, representatives of the army, important Persian ministers, and of course the chief minister, Otto von Bismarck, gathered in the unheated Hall of Mirrors in the Palace of Versailles to proclaim the new German Empire, headed by Kaiser William I of Prussia. So that is how the unification of Germany ended. Now let's find out how out the nation building process in Germany after unification. The new state of Germany placed a strong emphasis on modernizing the currency, banking, legal and judicial systems. Prussian measures and practices often become a model for the rest of Germany. With this, we come to an end of our today's class. But students, have you noticed one thing? That German, Germany became a one nation state with the, with the support or the efforts of conservatives. So, so the idea of nationalism was hijacked by the conservatives from revolution and democracy. With this, we come to an end to our today's class. In our next class, we will trace the story of the unification of Italy. Till then, take care and bye.